I was on my way to work. But for some reason that day, I just didn't feel right about going. But I went on and went. And all I know, it was this gentleman approaching me real fast. He was walking up behind me real fast. And he grabbed me. He wrapped his arms around me, put the switchblade knife to me, and he said, bitch, walk. And as I'm walking past, I'm passing my grandmother's house. He took me about behind the abandoned building, you know, and he raped me, and um, I just kept pleading with him for my life not to kill me. I want you to count to 20, and when you get through counting to 20, you could go. So I think I made it to 15, and then I ran straight to my grandmother home. And that was the first time I ever seen my grandmama cry in her life. She wrapped her arms around me. She said, it's gonna be okay. They did the rape kid. They took the evidence and and they sealed it up. And that was, that was it, you know? No follow-ups, no calls, no anything. I've never been soft on crime. We were going to try to be more proactive when it came to crime, as opposed to waiting until something's already happened. And at that particular time, the mayor of the city of Detroit had just been removed from office, charged, and convicted. Certainly people were beginning to see that we had corruption at some levels in city government. The rape kits were found. Um, there was really no blueprint, no protocol, no roadmap, no nothing. I knew, number one, that, we, that all of them had to be tested. And that was also not a popular view at the time. It was a very unpopular view at the time. So the estimate that we were initially given by the Michigan State Police was anywhere from 12 to $15 million just to test them. We knew we weren't gonna be able to raise that kind of money. I was told later in the process that by the county executive that I should not be basically wasting my time on these kids, which was a slap in the face in my view to women everywhere, number one, who are the most victims of sexual assault, but certainly to the work we were trying to do in prosecuting violent crime. I was with the Detroit Police Department as an intern in 1995. At that time, that was when we were getting rape kits, but they weren't being processed. Overall, there was a sense of apathy, victim blaming, racism. I think that the kits were just not important because no one wants to even believe that rape happens. I was 33 years old when I was raped. It was somebody I met at a park. He picked me up uh, for a date. Well, I went to work, came home, and decided to walk up to the store, which is two blocks away. I was standing at a bus stop, waiting on the bus. My children were in one room, but the baby was in the bed with me. He got back in the car, he started punching me. I just started hitting him and hitting him and hitting him. He was hitting me and hitting me. Next thing I know, the bike was on the ground and he was next to me with a knife against my throat. Told me don't scream or don't make any movement because he had a gun and to keep, start walking. He told me. He said, I've been watching you for a long time. And it was like my life flashed before my eyes. How long did it last for, do you remember? You said it was a long time. Hours. Hours. I was in shock. I was outraged, and I just assumed, you know, that kits were tested. The effort to get those 10,000 Detroit rape kits off of the shelves and into the crime lab has been going on since 2009. Each rape kit costs $490 to process. The city is hoping to raise 10 million additional dollars from outside sources to speed up the testing program. With Michigan State Police now processing Detroit's rape kits, about 1,600 have been completed. The effort has uncovered more than 400 serial rapists and identified thousands of suspects. Now I heard on the news one day that Kim Worthy said that she was going to get all them kids tested. Well, I was led to believe that they, when it happened, that they actually had did a testing, but that never happened. I was left in a dark room on a shelf, and I couldn't see, and not even knowing I was there. That's the sad part.
I'm calling about the 1995 rape. And I was just, they said we found him. We believe he done assaulted other women, but you have a DNA hit. He pleaded guilty and admitted to what he did. He's serving 15 to 30 years. You know, you're not supposed to question the Lord for what's happening in your life. But he came down and showed me, no, everybody that do you wrong, not getting away with it. When you put something back on the burner for 20 years and then all of a sudden it just pops out at you, you're like, wow, is this really happening again? We have so far 42 convictions, over 750 serial rapists that have been identified. I finally feel like I got justice. They could have been more happy that he's not out here to do that to no one else. There's a person, a breathing person with breath in her body uh, behind every single kid. It's, it makes much more than common sense to say that if these kids have been tested at the appropriate time in a timely way, many, many, many hundreds of rapes could have been prevented, potentially. If they have been supposed to test them a long time ago, a lot more women would be getting justice than just me. A lot more women deserve justice. Statistics have told us that over, there are over 400,000 untested or backlog rape kits in this country, and I think that that's a very conservative number. I think there are probably many more.